Hello, welcome to the uh, Miles Square trial um, on Wednesday and daily show from the new federal state of China on Rumble at LFA TV. So thank you for the uh, for supporting us and by being here and received updates from the court. So I'm Ava Chen from new federal state of China, and I'm very pleased to have um, Max joining me right outside at the courthouse of the Southern District of New York to bring us the latest update from the court. So welcome, Max. Hi, Max. Hi there, How are Ava. You? It's my, good, thank you. It's my absolute pleasure to be reporting to you live from uh, the live courthouse, Southern District of New York. I'd like to welcome all the viewers, the fellow friends, family, and fellow fighters who have tuned in to enjoy live updates of the ongoing trial. Um, but yeah, Ava, you were here today. How did you feel uh, about the trial? I'm feeling great. Um, as I said, uh, today is actually day 15. It is the Wednesday. We, we know three weeks ago the, the trial started on May 22nd. So this is exactly uh, the third week. Um, so I think we are still on witness 14. And as you know, uh, Max, the witness 14 probably is very, very important for prosecution team because they started on June 10th which is the day before yesterday, right? They started direct questioning and all the way continued, the direct questioning was actually over a, a full day because it continues on to yesterday, right? And that until yesterday afternoon, we started uh, cross. And then the cross examination continues to today, this morning. And I understand that they had a second round of direct and the second round of cross, which is ended at the end of the day. So gave us a, a quick overrun of um, how the day actually went. Absolutely. And before I dive into that, I just want to give all the viewers a quick rundown of how Mr. Miles is doing. So as expected, he came in bright and early to greet all the fellow fighters and all the supporters that were in the uh, the courthouse today. He's looking exuberant as always, a little bit playful today, <laughs> sporting a dark navy blue suit, uh, a light dress shirt, as well as a dark colored tie. He seemed to be greeting and pointing at people as if he was conversing with them with his eyes. And Ava, I just want to bring um, the viewers' attention to a quote that I heard, and it's, the kindest person in the room is oftentimes the most intelligent. And that's because cruelty given to people who are different than us, think differently, is an animalistic instinct we as humans have evolved with. And kindness is something that we have evolved from to, to share our, our higher level of intellect. And this is because I want to point out that Mr. Miles has shown kindness and welcoming to every single person that's been inside the court. Um, to as far as I, I've been here, I've been welcomed. And he's also shown grace even towards the, the people that have testified against him, accusing him of terrible things. As you remember, maybe last week, um, there was even a witness that was making threatening gestures towards him, but he yeah. never yeah. Uh, fainted his, his smile on his face. So I just want to give the viewers a quick um, understanding of what it feels like to be in the courthouse because that's not an opportunity many people have. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing Absolutely. that out. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I second to that. What you just said about kindness is very beautiful. Um, and I think the audience get a sense of how Miles basically holding himself throughout this trial, regardless who uh, he is actually facing. Right. So, yeah, go ahead. Give us the rest of Absolutely. the day. Absolutely. For sure. So, as you said, um, the witness 14 was a very, very um, important part of the prosecution's uh, argument against uh, Mr. Miles Guo. Um, as you said, they had begun two days prior to today, mm -hmm. um, and the direct questioning took about uh, more than a day. And we just started the first cross-examination at the start of today. And today, uh, we actually was a we were able to bring out the 15th witness. So the redirect and the recross had actually finished by around 2.40 p.m. by the end of today. Um, I, and before I dive into all of that, I just want to introduce the 15th witness, um, who I didn't get too much information on. However, I do know uh, she goes by 
uh, the name uh, Miran Wu, who you'll, you'll see in the court documents later tonight. And she was a person living in New Jersey who also was a former follower of Mr. Mao. So we, I believe we could look forward to another um, victim uh, witness brought on by the prosecutors to testify against Mr. Miles. Um, but just yeah, one, that, that sorry, was a, Max, just a quick yeah. uh, one correction. So we actually didn't sure. start the cross examination this morning. We started yesterday afternoon and this morning, the right, first right. round of cross yeah, continues the end. And the other thing, just a full point of a clarification, you mentioned that the witness fifth, uh, the witness number 15 was introduced at mm -hmm. what time? At my understanding, the full day is pr pretty much taken by the witness 14. So at what time that was witness 15 introduced? For sure. So we ended the final cross of witness 14 at around 2.40, I believe. So it was, she was brought on after 2.40. Now, I want to uh, bring to your attention, as you said, it had started prior to today, the cross, and it just goes to show how long this witness 14 has taken. And it has even involved the uh, judge's intervention because it has caused significant delays in the the proceedings of this trial. The judge has the judge was um, forced by the prosecution to hopefully extend the seatings, uh, the the sitting of the uh, court for next week. So next week, the court will go on from Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday, and they were um, suggested to sit from 9:30 all the way to 5 p.m to make up for the time that was lost. Now that's very interesting, Ava, because if you remember um, last week when they were making the case of their their witness and their flights, they had actually adhered to the proper um, scheduling of those witnesses, if I believe witness uh, 10 through 12, they, they were mm -hmm. the ones that they had mm -hmm. timeline concerns about. And they, were, they even managed to fit in an extra witness by the end of last week. So it definitely is a little surprising to think that or to hear that they they brought up this this issue of time and they've also brought up the fact that they have to streamline it significantly cutting out lots of important details in their words in order to meet the timeline or uh, deadlines for the trial yeah my understanding is yeah. this week's trial is also extended by i think uh, 15 minutes right today tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and what the 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 time that you propose for the full day is not finalized correct has not been finalized it, it's that's correct and perhaps we will be able to hear back from um the the panel members if they were able to catch that if there was a final confirmation and if there will be then uh we'll see what the proposed timeline will be for the next few days but um there was also a lot of interesting uh components to the whole trial that happened even before the uh, the court had begun today, and it involved a lot of uh, debate over which um, evidence they could the defense were able to permit as objected by the government. I be believe a lot of those were very very crucial to uh, the whole understanding and the whole nuance behind a lot of the testimony from witness number 14. So I believe it's something that you could possibly dive into later on with the panel members, and I believe it paints a full picture of of um, what is outlined in his testimony. Okay, that's great. Yeah, we will leave it to uh, Feather and Jackson. Yes. For sure. Is there any highlight of the um, cross-examination that came out to you that it's memorable? Absolutely. So um, I believe the, uh, the objection, sorry, the objective of the prosecution, uh, as you've seen in the past couple of days, was to use uh, Mr. Khalid as a a uh, source to um, talk about all the financial misdoings uh, what, that he was involved with when he was employed by um, Soraka as well as Crane. And interestingly, as you know, a lot of people had gone into the fact that he had also incriminated himself um, by testifying on direct yesterday. The fact that, you know, multiple, multiple white collar fr uh, crimes that he committed throughout the period of 2000 and nine through 2016, way before that he even had involvement with uh, Yvette Wan or Mr. Guo. So um, he had also admitted to the uh, theft of wages as in the breach of contract with his appointment at Citibank by um, agree by under the covers uh, being employed by two separate entities at the exact same time for two months. Um, uh -huh. So 
this had also uh, essentially, I guess their their objective, from my understanding, was to paint a picture of um, mishandling with a lot of the operations. But um, when we started across yesterday and today, I believe uh, it, it has been a very similar case to uh, Mrs. Mulan from last week, if you recall, um, to build yeah. a a case against the the validity of his testimony and. As you know, there were lots of um, uh, highlights from today where he was seen uh, contradicting his own testimony with either pieces from the evidence or uh, his own testimony from before. So that was very interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Because you mentioned about um, the, you know, why the prosecutor prosecutor team spent so much time on him is because they want to build a story about financial, like uh, lay the foundation for the fraud, right, for the fraud cases. And he seems is uh, handling, according to his testimony yesterday, handling a lot of banking stuff uh, for uh, the, the related entities. So did today, through, throughout the cross, or maybe the second round of the direct, is there something has been emphasized? Is there something came up again that was actually came, already talked about yesterday? Is there any revisit today? Yeah, for sure. And before I dive into the, the redirect and the recross, I just want to point out that um, I believe sitting through the, uh, the, the first initial cross, it became clear to us that the objective was to detach his entity from the entities uh, or the, the handlings of Mr. Guo and the G-Series as a separate dysfunctional entity that was acting against the, 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 the will and the orders of said um, uh, defendant. And it was because we had also discovered that his company directly benefited and, um, from the transferring of, of uh, money because of a 2% fee. And this 2% fee is very, very important because it also came into light and it was implied that he had transferred this 2% uh, fee, and I say in quotation marks, because it was a mis, uh, inaccurate calculation of the total proceedings that he had earned to his personal uh, accounts in which uh, he also bought um, seven Airbnb property, sorry, seven uh, properties, which property. three of them he property. wanted. Yeah, he wanted to use for Airbnb. And so it seemed that he had a lot of personal gain and it was very hard for him to come to terms with his uh, his own misdoings because as seen in the cross-examination, he was very, very avoidant with many of the questions that directly implicated him. Um, it was also seen that, it was also implied that he was uh, guilty of extortion because he was holding on to such, um, funds uh, from G clubs per se and holding it on yeah. because he wanted the 2% fee. So maybe you can t talk more about that. For sure, yeah, we're definitely going to sure. give the audience a little bit of background information because it's confusing because a lot of people don't know that he was sure. also hired by Soraka Media with an annual salary of 350000 with an understanding of his title is VP Banking Relation and Strategy, which all he does, all he did at that time was required to do is to basically open bank accounts for um, a lot of the related entities that we call G-Series because we were under attack of the CCP. And every step of the way, the CCP has, you know, using their proxies or the spies to sabotage all those transfer of the funds. And they're looking at a seizing all those investors' funds, which many of who are actually still, were still living in communist China at that time. So with that understanding, um, so for, because uh, I understand yesterday, you know, at the end of the yesterday trial, that the judge reminded this witness that he, you know, need, needs to talk to his uh, um, legal counsel regarding incriminating himself. Because I I understood from yesterday that the non-persecution agreement that he signed, he entered into with the prosecutor team, does not cover for all you know, the, 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 the wrongdoings that he conducted, particularly not cover under the state law. So in today's uh, testimony, did you see he pleaded fifth amendment to some of the questions, or did, did, did some of this discussion from yesterday impacted him in terms of his answer? 
Yeah, for sure. So you can see that he was very, very avoidant with a lot of the questioning from today. Um, like you said yesterday, he was advised to seek uh, legal counsel due to the uh, the implication of his crimes within this trial. And um, one thing that was brought up in repetition was, in fact, the, his non-prosecution agreement that outlined with the, the government, the FBI, of all the charges that he was covered by. Um, and this was a, a main focus for many of the, uh, the discussion, whether it be the cross or the direct, uh, redirect from today. Um, one other thing that came up was the, uh, the recording that they played uh, yesterday that you may be able to get more in depth into. Um, but in, in general, I would say, uh, just like the, the, the witness from last week, witness number 12, if I remember correctly, uh, Mulan, um, a lot of his avoidant answers have led, to my opinion, the jurors to question his answers, his testimony uh, on a shaky basis. And they seem to be believing the implications of the question more than the answer itself, because a lot of the answers were, like you said, um, I don't know, I don't remember, I don't recall. So it, it's very interesting to see that these answers would come from someone so meticulous and so capable, especially in the line of work that he does. Last question before I let you go, because Feather and um, um, Kevin is uh, already here. So I wanted to know what the, because I know the spectator, the galleries are basically pretty much uh, occupied by the uh, followers of the movement. So how was uh, their reaction doing uh, throughout yesterday and today, especially for Witness 14? Absolutely. I think um, every, most most people uh, in the crowd were listening very, very intently. And I would say perturbed or intrigued by the, the answers because a lot of the followers had known um, about his misdoings, especially in Crane, from watching Mr. Mao's uh, testimony, or not his testimony, but his, his words from before. I've, and most of this had, yeah, in his, in his broadcast, a lot of these uh, doings had actually been laid out in a chronological timeline, and a lot of people had prior understanding to who this person was and what he had done in his involvement with the investor funds and G-Series and Crane as an uh, entity as whole. Well. So thank you again, Ava, and I very much look forward to the, uh, the panel today. Thank you very mu much, Matt. So I talk to you uh, next time. Thank you. For sure. Thank you. Okay. So list i wanted just to bring up our social media account on um, x and getter just to let everyone know if you want to follow this case it will be very easy for you to receive um the updates daily updates uh, by following nfsc speak on x this is showing a nfsc speaks um uh, account and also you can go to yeah score down a little bit these are the updates that we send out throughout the trial every day and also if you want to get to the transcript because that's where the uh, the details uh, resides so you can get get all get all those transcripts on our website which is nfscofficial.com so that's it that's the information so now we're welcoming our two panelists back into the uh, live broadcasting room so hello hi Heather hi, hi Kevin <laughs> welcome back hi Eva <laughs> Um, yeah, hi friends of LFA TV and then the NFSC fellow fighters and everyone's watching this live stream. Mm -hmm. I am Feather. I'm just back from the court. Kevin. Hi Eva and hi everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, just like Feather, um, happy to be here today and just came back from court as well. Okay, so I, my understanding there's a lot of great things happening in right. the courtroom yes. in terms of uh, you know helping um, how helping the jury to reach the final non guilty uh, mm -hmm. uh, verdict, but. Tell us a little bit what's going on in detail. How did, because uh, this is the second day that Sabrina did, started the cross, right? So mm -hmm. how did this cross compare with, you know, what she had yesterday? Um, well, a lot of compared with yesterday, yeah. um, cause, because of the direct, of the very long, lengthy direct examination, mm -hmm. Sabrina was trying to, um, you know, um, uh, get back at every argument that the prosecutor made. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, oh my god, I can't remember exactly. How what did she start today? She started uh, mm -hmm. by, you know, mentioning the, the affidavit um, by that's uh, submitted as the um, the PAX uh, litigation. Uh, do you wanna do you wanna start yeah, off so talking about that? Sure. She, so uh, you know, for a brief overview, she started off with the cross examination of the fourteenth witness, mm -hmm. Adam Khalid, mm -hmm. 
and he oh. was a uh, he used to work at City as a bank relationship manager, uh -huh. and then he uh, went to work for Soraka and GTV back in 2020, and so she started off with an affidavit signed and submitted by the witness. And it was regarding the Pax litigation. Which is the litigation yeah. that uh, goes back to a few years ago, yeah. right? Started in 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pax, uh, we were saying that the mm -hmm. chairman of the Pax uh, is Shang Wei Jian, who yeah. uh, the NFSC has been um, calling him a CCP spy based on the intel, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And he brought this lawsuits in South District, New York, against the Miles School in 2017. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah continue. And so, and, and it's more to note, no, he, this was a notarized. Uh, affidavit yeah. notarized by the notary, so it's official uh, court doc or official document, and he basically the witness basically swore on oath that uh, you know the city bank account has and or had and has nothing to do with Miles or his enterprises. At, so so no at, financial which interests. Time? What the time? Yes, the yeah. affidavit date is May 17, 2021. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So that's that's doing when yeah. he still basically holding the employment with yeah. Soraka. Okay, yes. so yeah. he made an affidavit that actually yeah. helping Miles yeah. School in the PACS case, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so he kept saying, well, I mean, Sabrina was asking questions mm -hmm. about it, and uh, he kept saying Miles had no connection on paper. He mentioned the word on paper many, many times uh, throughout today, and you know, basically, he basically explained it as the 1,300 wires in the city bank account had none had no mention of Miles, his name on it. None of the wires, none of the transfers, nothing. Right. Okay, so but yeah. he specifically mentioned um, the paper. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what, what what do you think he, he wants to establish here? There's an impl imp uh, like implementation that he's trying to implement yeah. that okay. he actually has some say in it and some sort of control that's not on paper. Mm -hmm. So basically, he's wanted to pointing you know all the responsibilities right. back to Miles. To Miles. Yeah. And yes. that yeah. one, uh, okay, and yes. gotcha. And a lot of times we're we're trying to, um, uh, you know, uh, to, to clear the mm -hmm. the funds, the two percent fee he received. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. To you know, when when he he had this agreement, or, you know, when he cl uh, uh, clear some funds uh, with the Queen account, um, he received the two percent fee out of the the money he cleared. Okay, so just to, for a point of a clarification mm -hmm. for the audiences, so this person, this witness 14, was an employee of Soraka Media and GTV, and he received a salary, but on the side, he also had created a company that he is the only uh, ultimate beneficiary owner and the director, right? Yes. And that company is called yes. Crane. So this is what you're talking about. Yes. He entered into a payment facilitation agreement with right. GTV. Right. Crane company entered. Right. Okay. And he is the only one that can receive money, send money, yeah. and close the account or open the account. So he he ha has the right to do anything mm -hmm. with this company and yeah. bank account. And there's no one else's right to do that except yeah. for him. I don't want to clear that up. Yeah. Um, so with the two percent fee, well, the thing is, at the end of the day, you know, there's a um, two point seven million dollars. Um, this is the two point five million dollars that he he took at the time, but then this, because this is raised my question yesterday. He took from where? He took from 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 the um, basically from the fee uh, from the fund that he cleared from the Korean account. Okay. Right. So yesterday he said he cleared ninety-seven million dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And I was wondering uh, when I was when I went home mm -hmm. and I was I was discussing it. I'm like, mm -hmm. two percent of seven seventy uh, two percent of ninety-seven million dollars is not two point seven million. Yeah, that's like, right. What mm -hmm. happened? Did he take more? Or did he miscalculate it? Or did he clear more fund that we didn't mm -hmm. know? But mm -hmm. then the truth is that he did clear. You know Eventually, the total of seven ninety-seven, but then he took the two point. Two point seven million dollars instead of the two percent of the ninety-seven. But question is, was he entitled to this two point seven million? Was he actually taken it lawfully at the time? Well, I mean, he testified that he believed, you know, he was entitled to the funds. Mm -hmm. But I mean, then you know, there's the obvious question that mm -hmm. Sabrina raised, mm -hmm. like, why did he agree to forfeit the two point seven million if that's it right. was legal? If he got Correct. it lawfully, right? Right. right. And so, you know, that's like it was a big back and forth, right? Yeah. Sabrina is trying to, mm -hmm. you know, get an answer out of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, he also testified that he transferred the money back, like one or two million, which really didn't make sense. You transferred into Crane mm -hmm. and then transferred back from the personal account, or sorry, from Crane to the personal account, then transferred back to Crane. 
which doesn't really make sense if you think about it. That's right. So because yeah. crane is owned by him, and yeah. he just transferred back from him to him. Right? To him, yeah. the crane <laughs> company account, which yeah. entered and has a responsibility of providing a kind of a throughput service we yeah. call escrow agent services yeah. on right. behalf yeah. of the G Club. So a little bit background background information for the audiences. If you missed yesterday's trial, we were talking about. So as you recall, the G Clubs, because anything that associated with Mile School is is going to be flagged. Okay, yeah. because of the um, mainstream media report on Miles School, because of the Chinese Communist Party put a red notice on him and calling him a fugitive. So anything, any move, any entities that associated with Miles School, all his family office, Golden Spring, are automatically have a difficulty to get bank account open or get money transferred. This is why he was hired. The witness 14 was hired. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. and, and basically, he pitched himself. He approached the Golden Spring, the family office, of course, say, hey, you need a person like me because I can help you this and that, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So, and he got hired and he, he hired the purpose for him is to helping open accounts and move money. So in this case, G Club, G Clubs is one of the entities that all the followers, investors are investing in, right? They purchasing the membership fees and millions, a hundred millions of dollars coming from all over the world, particularly from mainland China. And because of the difficulty of moving funds, so he established a crane company, okay? Mm -hmm. And served as the remitter, served as the middleman, okay? So the money he agreed to receive on behalf of the G clubs. And then he will move the money to wherever the investors want the money to go, mm -hmm. okay? And that's the background job, right. right? Okay, so when you mentioned about he took the, he moved the money from the Kring account mm -hmm. to his bank account, so right? Personal, personal bank, bank account. account. So my question to you is, was that legal? Was that, what, when was that happened? It was, it, it, he's entitled to move the 2% of the fee that he cleared. So 2% of 97 is not $2.7 million. Okay, so, he, so this is simple math. So okay. he, apparently the $2.7 million is, is not, he's not entitled to because mm. he did not clear the amount that, 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 that's, mm -hmm. that, you know, that's corresponded to, to the first 2%, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so then, then he agreed to forfeit this, this $2.7 million. To the government, mm -hmm. so this quiz question was raised. If if he keeps saying that this is lawfully learned, that he's mm -hmm. entitled to yeah. this two point seven million dollars, why he agreed to forfeit this to the government? Mm -hmm. If he's if he didn't steal anything, why That's agreed, right. you know, why agreed to, to give it back to the government? Right? Mm -hmm. Why 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 is that? Right? Mm -hmm. But this is a contradictory contradiction in his testimony yeah that's right yeah. yeah and I think there's a details into it because I, mm -hmm. I think uh, there's a conversation mentioned uh, you know during the cross mm -hmm. especially to ask him when did you move your money from the crane to your personal bank account are you entitled to at that time he wasn't that mm -hmm. is why he knew that's why he also testified he said he moved the money back yeah. remember mm -hmm. yeah. he moved the money back in April 2021 yeah. okay yes. I think yes. that's that because the the, the 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 payment facilitation agreement did not sign until May 12th, 2021. Yeah. That means prior to even agree to actually charging the 2% fees, he actually stole the money. Mm -hmm. He actually moved from Crane, the company account, okay, mm -hmm. and to his personal account, the amount of money that he is not entitled to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So keep going. So so I remember yesterday, if, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Yeah. I remember the rest of the money that did, he didn't take from Korean account went to the law firm Aaron Mitchell because there's nowhere else to go. Is that correct? So he, he, he said, he testified that he moved back the money from his personal bank account, some money back. We don't mm -hmm. know how much, okay? Right. Some money, but there's no statement, there's no banking statement, there's no transfer, uh, any kind of sort of record that he presented to the government, uh, you know, uh, assumingly would be very, mm -hmm. very uh, strong evidence showing him that he did not steal and this, he, he earned this lawfully. And there's part of it he's actually sent back, but none of that was shown in the court. That's right. And then he was like saying he bought seven properties um, mm -hmm. with, from the 2% fee, but we don't know if it's limited to $2.7 million. Mm -hmm. But there's no document showing he transferred back the money from his personal bank account to a Korean account. And there's no evidence or document showing that he said it could be. There could be a document, mm -hmm. but there's no actual evidence. And then from the 19 times he met with Mr. Uh, Miss uh, Juliana, prosecutor, prosecutor yeah. um, 19 times, you know, 
there was there was no such documents presented to the government. Yeah, and as you recall, there's no conversation even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't even divulge the information that the, the little middle step that he moved money from the crane company to his personal and then moved it back. Mm -hmm. He didn't he didn't tell anybody, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Can we move on to the, the KYC? I think that's Absolutely. a really important yeah. part. Um, um, so as we know, the, uh, the KYC is a known your customer. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not an expert, I'm just going <laughs> to explain to the audience what I know about KYC. So um, it's only, it can be done, basically, I think it was kind of like a research to the, the customer, to, yeah. to the client. Uh, it's usually done by the bank receiving the money. So so you, you everyone, each, each individual or each company can get a KYC mm -hmm. and then, then uh, from the bank, the bank does the KYC. Mm -hmm. Then the bank can receive money from you. Yeah. Um, so um, Queen could not receive any money if the KYC is not done, right? That's right. And also, um, the uh, the banking institution cannot does be cleared. It, cannot right? be cleared. Yes, yeah. the banking institution does the KYC. It's not the witness that does the KYC, or not Queen does the KYC. That's right. And he's only he's only an escort agent, according to him. Mm -hmm. That he he gets he gets he gets instruction to move money to move funds to clear funds from the bank account. Um, so there were two options that's mm -hmm. that's yeah. given to him. So uh, do you want to do you want is there background knowledge you want to give to the audience? Sure, or? I want the audience to understand mm -hmm. uh, wh wh when we talk about the commission. It's really because yesterday uh, when the day ends, we we had an impression of this person basically committed a theft of wage because he, uh, you know, doing a uh, two jobs, if, uh, eight hour jobs mm -hmm. uh, concurrently, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, and that actually had a little bit continuing on in terms of the cross. Mm -hmm. But we know, you know, he might committed a theft of wages, which is under state law, right? Mm -hmm. The non-prosecution team does not, uh, the agreement does not cover that, mm -hmm. does not provide the coverage for that. But today, uh, what came through is extortion. Okay, so uh, what came through come clear from the cross is at the time that they about to enter and negotiation goes on, there's letters from his lawyer to G Club negotiating this payment facilitation agreement. He actually hold on to $56 million that belong to the G Club's members, mm -hmm. okay, which he supposed to move along mm -hmm. to where the investors wants to go, mm -hmm. but he is using the excuses, what you just said. Mm -hmm. I need to know my clients, okay? I need to do this uh, due diligence check before I can release. Mm -hmm. So this came across, the logic comes. Everybody, as a banker, you should know, as a, as a seasoned. For almost, 10 years. Yeah, more than 10 years, <laughs> more, actually. Yes. Prior to that, for two years. So you should know that the KYC was only down for the receiving bank, mm -hmm. right? When you receive money, never when you actually sending out money. Right? Mm -hmm. So this KYC has nothing to do with you. So don't think that we don't know what you're talking <laughs> about, right? Yeah. So this has came across really close, mm -hmm. uh, really clear for us that he basically hold this $56 million as a hostage mm -hmm. and using that, negotiating, mm -hmm. asking his lawyer to say, hey, let's enter a 2 million percent of fees so mm -hmm. I can move the $2.7 million to my own personal account so I can invest it in Florida, acquiring seven properties and doing business on air B and B under name of my wife. Why I'm going through a bankruptcy proceeding, a lying to my trustee that I don't own this because it belongs to my wife. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We're really we're gonna get to that. It's, it's the most exciting part. Yeah. Well, the first option he had, right, yeah. with all the money he has, there's one option that is to um, send back to the original sender, which is the investors, the people who send money to the crane account mm -hmm. uh, to invest in, in G clubs, right? Yeah. Um, he said he returned a few out of, I don't know, 1,300? Yeah, he yeah. didn't uh, specify. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah th th there's a, a lot of wires, but then he, he claims that he returned a few. Mm -hmm. And then the other option is to close down the Korean bank account. This is the, the simplest way yeah. to stop receiving any money. And, you know, as many people told him, for example, Yvette, Yvette Wang, mm -hmm. uh, William G. Um, Milesen. Milesen, um who else? M Miles, Victor Serta, yeah. etc. And um, he did not do so. And then in, he, was he was shown to evidence that mm -hmm. April 30, 2021, Yvette Wen sent him a text message saying, yeah. telling him to let go of the bank account, stop yeah. receiving funds, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so let me just see here. More than one call 
in more than one call, uh, phone calls or video calls, if anyone tells him to close the accounts. Repeatedly. Yeah, repeatedly. Yeah. So because only the witness can close the account. That's correct. He can only, only him can open an account, receive money or uh, transfer money or you know, mm -hmm. close the account, right? And he never moved the money. He said he never moved money and then he didn't close the account. Mm -hmm. And then, um, sorry, he will receive. And he's yeah. he's excused for saying there's some balance in yeah. the top, right? Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Good. Because there's a large large balance in the Korean account. Yeah. yeah. Because the larger the balance is, the larger yeah. the two percent fee is. That's yeah. correct. This is the why he doesn't yeah. want to close the account. He can wants correct. to keep receiving money yeah. from yeah. the sender, from the investors. Yeah. That's correct. Good. And you know, Sabrina, the defense counsel, she played yeah. like, she she said four options, right? Yeah. One was you mentioned you mentioned uh, return the money back to the senders. One was closing the account, mm -hmm. and there's also one where you, you can transfer the money to Hamilton. That's correct. Him, like, That's Will and Jay's yeah. uh, investment oh, yes. fund, right? Management fund. Yeah. yeah. And like, and so, the witness kept saying that you know throughout his entire testimony, mm -hmm. you know, he was pressured into doing things. That's so right. Sabrina, you know, pointed out the fact yeah. that, look, Miles, Milesen, mm -hmm. Yvette, and William both pressured you, right? Like, yeah. Quote unquote, uh, pressure you to do things like such as yeah. you know move the money and he answered never, correct yeah yeah he and said he, yes. he never he never yeah. moved the money mm -hmm. that's right so, right so it's, it sort of contradicts his previous testimony that's correct mm -hmm. it just shows you that he doesn't want to yeah. regardless what he was saying previously that yeah. oh i wanted to i want to help you you know i understand mm -hmm. he didn't he he want to hold on to the money because the more mm -hmm. money he holds on it and yeah. the, the bigger the fee is and possibly he yeah. even want the the, the, the money, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because we know through the Miles School's previous 2000, uh, 2021 live broadcast, mm -hmm. at that time he wasn't very clear on in terms yeah. of who is doing it, but he mm -hmm. shared the gestic of this person might aiming to mm -hmm. basically take oh. over the $56 million mm -hmm. of the investor's money, right? Right, so at that time, you know, Miles knows that he's not trustworthy anymore. Yeah. He, 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 knows, right. he knows that this, this witness has some sort of personal intention into, exactly. into keeping money for himself. It was given three options outside of the two options that Yvette Wang offered. That's right. It's the, because, you know, he got sued by G-Club. And then he didn't, because he didn't transfer the $76 million. First one, transferred to Hamilton. Second of all, transfer to Himalaya. Exchange. Exchange. Yeah. Third of all, to a middle person that is... The, uh, Himalaya uh, yes. Alliance Committee, right? Committee. That was proposed as well, yeah. which yes. is the Himalaya Committee, that they're going to do this. Because a lot of the refund is very dangerous for the individual investors. So yeah. that is why Miles, actually in the recording yesterday, mm -hmm. right, he secretly recorded without consent of everyone. Yeah. And through one of the videos, we understood that because return the fund to original, some of the original sender could put them life, put their life in jeopardy. That is why that the, the, the idea is return to Alliance Committee, who is on behalf holding this, yeah. on this investors, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I, I remember in all of the recordings, he claims himself to be an escort agent who has an escort agreement. Yeah. yeah. So do you want to explain what escort agent is? Yeah, so basically uh, that's a, a, a question that asked by the cross uh, defense uh, defense counsel. So basically, he said, "Oh, you 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 testified yesterday being an escrow agent. Do you? Do, uh, but you were you registered as an escort agent in uh, in uh, in United States?" Mm -hmm. And then he said, "I'm the registered. Uh, I, I later registered as m as money service business." Okay. Money service and, transmitter. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, another question, a follow up question from the defense is, is do you think, do you believe that the escort escrow agent is the same as the money transmitter? <laughs> um, uh, and then his answer, obviously, these are two different things, yes. two, two different concepts. Mm -hmm. But he, his answer is, I relied on my lawyer. <laughs> I hope it's not the same lawyer. We got through yeah. that yesterday. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. He mentioned that he had a money services business yeah mm -hmm. and I mean Sabrina just asked him a bunch of questions about that and you know he, he, he clearly said he doesn't mm. he does not have an extra license because that's right um, you know because he he just did not apply for it right he does not have that license he, he said so he later ask, he had yeah. it he said later he had it but yeah. he's trying to very be very ambiguous mm -hmm. yeah. in terms of when he had it and what is the the, the license wh whether mm -hmm. whether he was in registered yeah. as an escrow escrow mm -hmm. agent or not yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and then and then there was showing email of the notice of a termination of the 
uh, payment facilitation agreement. Agreement. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and in June 30, 2021, basically mm -hmm. this is the termination to show that yeah. the the G Club doesn't want to do business with Crane yeah. anymore. Yeah. So G Club's lawyer sent mm -hmm. a notice of termination yeah. of Crane contract, yes. serving as this middleman. Yes. Right? Okay. And then sent it to his attorneys. Yeah. This uh, witness attorneys. So um, contracted. Yeah. The witness tried to frame it as you know he wanted to cancel the agreement right yes and I remember that yes and then, that was really good yeah, yeah. and then um, you know then Sabrina you know set, showed proof that it was actually G clubs who wanted to uh, terminate it he and lied that, he lied yeah, he lied in front yeah. of everyone mm -hmm. yeah. right he said no because there's a number of questions to ask him yeah. what the truth is one is do you want the contract with crane to be terminated mm -hmm. and he, says, and yes. he said yes, yes. Right, and the, the, there's another time. Ask, yeah. do you have interest in terminating of this uh, this contract? Right, yeah. he said no. Right, he, yeah. I don't want this contract. Uh, I want this contract to be terminated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then that's also a, a point of contentious this morning. Right, yeah. remember before the trial starts, the yeah. the, the both parties, the counsels are uh, uh, debating whether the defense can submit it in evidence. Right. That's exactly the letter. The letter is dated on July 11th, 2021. It's a response mm -hmm. from this guy, uh, this witness for. Lawyer yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. to the notice that sent by G Club mm -hmm. regarding the notice of termination mm -hmm. of Crane's service, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what the response? It's to ask to withdraw this termination of the payment facilitation agreement. No, so the response is, oh. is not to. It's, it's not, not to. to. Yeah, yes, it's yes. not to. Yeah. So, basically, it means like the lawyers ask him, so we, let's, let's withdraw this, this, this termination. Yeah, uh, we'll, we want to keep working with yeah. you. Yeah, we want to keep work, working with you, and they also yeah. mm -hmm. proposed a lot of ways to working to keep in order to keep the relationship. They really, you know, went a uh, 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 certain length, right? Yeah. What What did they say? Do you Did you guys record it? The offers in terms of a, uh, you know, to the G Club in terms of keeping that relationship with G Club. Uh, let me see. Uh, I didn't exactly have the uh, the offers, okay. but basically, I mean, G clubs didn't want to work with the witness anymore, right? Yeah, the G witness, clubs say yeah. we're done. Okay, yeah. we're done. Yeah. Regardless what you offer, we're not interested yeah. in one of the offer. I did re uh, uh, record. Yes. Oh, is you it, get it? Is it you okay. offer to return the money to G club without KYC? Without KYC yes. from Crane. Yeah. So now, because the G Club say, hey, I'm going to sever the relationship. I'm not yeah. satisfied with you, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then they say, hey, don't, 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 don't. I'm, I'm okay now letting yeah. people, uh, letting the money go without KYC. Uh -huh. yeah. Which definitely proved that what he said earlier to G Club was a bluff. Yeah. Right, yeah. he just he just wanted to, uh, the, you know, yeah. keep the bigger balance and then yeah. get more commission. He's right? like, yeah. we can't send without KYC. Now That's he's right. like, we yeah. want to send without KYC. Exactly, yeah. and then they also offered through his lawyer say that we are now re we're willing to return some of the money to the original senders. Mm. Yeah. Okay, this is another. But right. regardless of what they said, the G said G Club said I had enough with you. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. you're not trustworthy. We're gonna sever the yeah. relationship. So mm -hmm. what, what what went on? And I mean, he was panicking, right? Because yeah. he's gonna lose the fifty six million. That's he's right. He's gonna lose the two percent fee, right? That's correct. And you know that's the exact entire reason why he even created Crane, right? That's right. Two percent fee. Yeah, and this yeah. leads to the arbitration. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's the leads to the arbitration. Yes, so to, to pay back the, the $57 million. He, 56 million. 50, sorry, yeah. 56 million dollars that he held in Crane's bank account. So the reason is be, reason because G-Club doesn't want to work with you again, right? Yeah. And then it seems to him that the witness only attended to the first one. And then um, the, the second one, he went in person. Okay. Um, yes, yeah. but so, he, he claims he's not interested in the fifty-six million dollars. Yeah, he's still regardless. Like uh, this, 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 te this witness is is not trustworthy. I think he has shown uh, through yesterday's cross examination and today's mm -hmm. that he is a habitual liar. Okay, he has a uh, lots of ulterior motives, and and he just lied. So yeah. so even after the notice of termination, he's not returning the money. So the, this this issue had to set in court. So that is why G G Club took him, to sued him, and yeah. threw in an arbitration. Right, that's yeah. what you're mm -hmm. talking about. Through the first arbitration proceeding, mm -hmm. the three arbitrators told Crane, which this witness, to return the money, yeah. and he had to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, he had to return, which is thank God the fifty-six million dollars of the investors are secured. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's the money. 
uh, throughout yesterday, uh, the, the information that he transferred to Aaron Mitchell, which is the, uh, the lawyer on behalf of the G Club, mm -hmm. right? So the second, there is a second uh, arbitration actually taking back the 2.7 million, mm -hmm. right? Remember? Yes. And then this, uh, and, and then doing, doing the cross, our lawyer asked him a question. I don't know whether you remember. Have you provided the same recording mm. to the arbitrator? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what do you think why that, that's important? Um, the same recording he presented in court. Yeah, because we heard a lot of yeah. recordings, right? Mm -hmm. He yeah. secretly recorded mm -hmm. without everybody's aware, like he's, his phone call with Miles and his phone call with Yvette Wan and Miles Guo and all those meetings. Mm -hmm. And he also mentioned, uh, our cross counsel asked did you actually give the same recording to the arbitrator, especially in the second arbitration, right? Because the second arbitration, the result is the G Club did not get the 2.7 million because that case against witness 14 was dismissed, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and but, but through the cross, when uh, he answered, he at least provide one, uh, one order more. report to yes. the arbitrator. Yes. And the arbitrator still uh, just basically say, confirm, there's no money laundering, there's nothing, you know, mm -hmm. nothing to see, but yeah. this case is dismissed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we get to the point why mm -hmm. this is important, because I think it's connected with the end of the day. Mm -hmm. End of the day, because I exited for the cross, right. for the yeah. second right. round of cross, because there's something coming up regarding the re uh, video uh, audio right, recording, right? right. right? Um, yeah. And it tied together, and it shows you this person because one of the argument he made if you mm -hmm. recall kevin and feather is mm -hmm. he said i randomly record this meeting yeah. there's no particular purpose for which meeting i choose to i chose to record mm -hmm. and i think that was a lie right yeah. and mm -hmm. cross did a very good job to show that was a lie do you guys want to say anything about this i mean so mm -hmm. sabrina right. defense counsel she showed and, you know, an audio clip of where there was Anna, which I believe is uh, the lawyer I, the from lawyer, the uh, G, G Club Clubs in, in Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Yeah. yeah, you know, she was talking, and then the clip just cuts off, right? That's so, right. you know, clearly, she, Sabrina also, you know, was very clear that like, he's the one that chooses to, to, to record, cut. yeah, when to start, when to stop recording, and yeah. you know, it saves on his computer, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So he made the decision to cut it off. So you know, clearly, it shows that you know it's not a random. That's right. selected recording like he said mm -hmm. that's correct. Yeah. that's a very good point mm -hmm. uh, because he he said you know usually that's the end of the meeting that yeah. he finished the record but the yeah. one that we listened it was somebody just talking in the middle of the sentence hasn't yeah. finished yet mm -hmm. and that proved he was lying and mm -hmm. the other point is at the end of the today when I exiting the courtroom they were discussing uh, I remember that the Sabrina was asking question about okay so these are recordings are all this conversation that in the meeting that you were you you were part of are in Chinese right mm -hmm. and you don't understand any Chinese right mm -hmm. and he said yeah I don't understand so did you do anything After afterwards mm -hmm. did you find out what what they discussed what 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 what, what they discussed mm -hmm. did you provide this copy to arbitrator Okay, so because when was the arbitrator? The arbitrator was actually happening in 2021. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so so that means he must knew if he provided. I, I wasn't because I left it. Was uh, Sabrina confirmed? Right. It, well, he said about his lawyer. Recording? He said my lawyer. Well, again, he's he's going. He's uh, my lawyer. Did oh, love X Y okay. X Y Z? And then Sabrina was asking, does your know? Does your lawyer know any Chinese? And he okay. said, I don't know. Okay. So he doesn't know if his lawyer knows any Chinese. Um, so, and he, he, yeah, he definitely discussed with Alex about this phone call. Um, but then. But not, Alex doesn't know Chinese, right? No. Yeah. no. Sabrina asked, did Alex understand Chinese? He said, no, Alex doesn't understand. So, mm -hmm. so the question is, he tried to uh, leave an impression that he does not know what was the recording was saying because mm -hmm. they're in Chinese. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Sabrina trying to ask the question and establish that this guy lies again. Yeah. Because he knew, because he provided the recording to the second arbitrator, which happened in 2021. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. he already knew what's going on. Right. right? Because yeah. the first time he met with the with the, the, uh, the prosecutor was in uh, in the middle of 2022. So he kept this specific recording for over a year, year. without yeah. looking into. Because yes. he said without looking into uh, uh, what 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 the recording was saying, did not do any mm -hmm. follow up conversation with Yvette Wan, did not talk to anybody. That's just strange, right? Yeah. yeah. You secretly. 
recorded something, then you you just not suddenly not interested in, to know what's going on, what's the discussion. Right, and then you yeah. provide to the government. Exactly. As an, as in twenty twenty two. Yeah, as an evidence. Yeah. Yeah. So so anything else? Because we still have mm -hmm. uh, five more minutes mm -hmm. in terms of the highlights at the second mm -hmm. half of the right, class. Right. So about the about the money, ab mm -hmm. no, no, about the house he purchased. Um, yeah. you know, it's it's very very interesting. He he said he bought the house in, in around 2021, 2022. So and he only well he only got fired in uh, middle of twenty twenty one. So so you know he he was July uh, twenty twenty. I yes, think June or July. July yeah. June thir thirty. He got a termination okay, notice. Okay, yeah, right. Um, so before he got a dispute, right? Uh, he he still put these houses in his wife's name. His his right. his excuse his reasons were yeah. because something I think something might happen to me physically, physically. Phys yeah. harm physically yeah, harm. physical harm and I wanted to put this uh, to the property to in the name of someone I trust and then I can so, um, you know protection financially protect them That's financially right. yes but then he did not put his his name with well, later later on. Sabrina was asking, or defense lawyer asked him, if trustee finds out that the the property is in your name, they would they will be seized, right? Yes. Because you have a personal bankruptcy going on. That's right. That's correct. That's connected for the audience. So yeah. yesterday's cross came came across that he had a financial difficulties and he yeah. admitted right. to. Yeah. And in 2018, he filed for uh, Chapter 13 bankruptcy, right? Mm -hmm. And Although there is uh, the, the trustee proposed multiple times to terminate the uh, filing because he missed uh, payments right. uh, for 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 the for the per, uh, to the to the parties that he owed money to, right? Yes. That's the reason why the trustee uh, dismissed so many times, and he still own people money that he yes. hasn't paid yet. Yeah, because right? you, know, you have to give a list of your assets when you file a personal Correct. bankruptcy. Yeah. So basically, so he's trying to concede right he's yeah. trying to hide yeah. all those 2.7 million dollars and the the property that he purchased using that money away from trustee that is why the question cross very clear and he confirmed he didn't share with the prosecutor team he didn't yeah. share with the trustee yeah. so that's the purpose so mm -hmm. it's not what he said he's afraid of personal physical harm after mm -hmm. he after you know the dispute with the g clubs mm -hmm. that he's yeah. insinuating that Miles School and this G Series entities would do something to him, right? He's insinuating that, mm -hmm. but the evidence cannot be more clear that he is actually trying to hide from the trustee from his bankruptcy proceedings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the and then we and also um, the 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 cross uh, the defense counsel pulled up this non prosecution agreement uh, mm -hmm. to to the witness and to the jurors, yeah. um, you know, sh listed. Eight crimes covered. <laughs> eight. One to eight. Eight crimes covered by federal government. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of the one of the what was the one of one of the uh, charge that he potentially would have? There's there was two home loan. He he inflated his inflated, expenses. Yeah. And then um, you know there's to one, get more loans yeah. from the yeah. banking yeah. information. Yes. Then there's uh, one institute. for yeah. uh, unlicensed money services business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which you know begs the question. He said he was licensed. So why did he need coverage for that? Yeah, and his response correct. was because in case his lawyer made a mistake. <laughs> and then so then everyone's asking, like, where are you getting these lawyers? From, yeah, right? I, like, that's I right. hope it's not the same lawyer yeah. as before, right? And that's so correct. every it seems that you know everything that he's said so far, you know, if, if yeah. is to cover for mistakes mm -hmm. made by his lawyer. So he's yeah. trying to push, you know, all that's the correct. blame onto his lawyer instead yeah. of yeah. you know himself. It's it's a very logical question to ask. Why would the government cover you? This is a considered as crime that you committed in the past. Mm -hmm. Why would they cover it that you've done and you said it was completely legal? And correct. you practice illegal. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, in case my lawyer made a mistake. Yeah. Of course it's my lawyer's mistake. <laughs> um, and you know, uh, with the writing the checks without no knowing without sufficient fund, like mm -hmm. six to seven checks. That's one of the crimes you committed in the past too. Yeah. Right. And um, and that was basically the highlights. For okay. I I understand from um, um, Max mm -hmm. that basically both parties, both the defense and prosecutor team, finished the uh, the the questioning of the witness for fourteen, and they yeah. introduced witness fifteen. 15. Yeah. Is that okay? So give us a little bit. We still have a few minutes. Um, who is witness fifteen? So it started around two thirty-five. Yes. So not. There's only about 20 minutes left of the uh, the trial. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, brief background: the witness 15 is called Miran Wu. She's a she's a female and she lives in New Jersey. 
and um, she used to follow Miles before. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you know she was born in China and she came uh, to US in two thousand one, and she first you know got introduced to him through watching mm-hmm. his YouTube videos. Yes. Got gotcha. twenty eighteen. So. So they're just starting direct questioning. They yeah. haven't get to the gist yeah. of it. Yes. Uh, so the, we will the probably time we left. Yes. Yeah, we likely to you know uh, see more uh, questions cross from direct yeah. for the witness fifteen and yeah. and sounds like she is also a, a victim. So far, we had a, already four claimed self claimed victims yeah. of this uh, G series. But I think one of the highlights I remember that mm-hmm. Sabrina when uh, he crossed the last vic- uh, wi- uh, um, witness w- witness uh, not the last. Uh, I think a witness number 12, uh, Mulan Yali, uh, Miss Yali, I think, not right. number 12, number 10. Number and, 10, yes. Yeah, and she, so when the, and she was a, a member of the uh, alliance committee, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So mm-hmm. one of the group leaders and also a farm leaders for the G translator. And when she testified, she always say, we were deceived, we were lied to. And Sabrina had a very good uh, questioning and confirming, like you can only speak to yourself, right? And and you cannot speak to them on behalf of them. And when um, Sabrina mentioned about them and she actually turned back and look at us, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And all the, because we're sitting and the follower, there's a lot more followers sitting at the mm-hmm. bench and the galleries and nodding heads. Yes, she doesn't represent me and mm-hmm. I, you know, we know this. So, so, so are you so for this witness 15 are you prepared to receive some of the information that you probably not purview uh to in the past for sure for sure mm-hmm. we we were talking about this on the way back and yeah. saying oh this 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 might probably be the same kind of testimony that we were kind of expecting and then also we also wanted to know how far he thought fo- she followed the movement you know and how how far how far how far back is she stopped following? And mm-hmm. also, would, this is all something to say about you know um, her her intention mm-hmm. uh, to follow this this movement at the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, and of course they also talk about a little bit background of hers. You know, her parents and some some personal informations um, to show that he actually have some some sort of motives to to go against the CCP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then that doesn't say anything about you know uh, that which afterwards what she mm-hmm. she she would do what she thinks about Miles, right? Yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna look. For, yeah, we really look forward into the his her testimony tomorrow. For sure, yeah. and uh, yeah, really exciting. Yeah, they are they all have different motivations. There are different stories, but yes. one thing throughout the this whole trial that all those so called witnesses, um, uh, so called uh, victims of mm-hmm. the movement, are actually all victims of the CCP. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. every single one. That, so we've listened so far that their families, their grandparents, are actually suffering. Um, the slaughtering uh, of their ancestors or plundering of their wealth, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know, subject them to uh, persecutions from the communist China. So mm-hmm. that's the pattern. And throughout this trial, uh, a lot of those uh, things regarding the CCP's infiltration and CCP's persecution of dissidents in a different country, especially the United States, came across, mm-hmm. right? So, so that's why we're looking forward to see the witness 15. And I understand from this morning's discussion, they might have more witness introduced. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And then there's a potential delay into the trial. So we were oh. kind of wrong about the pace. Okay. Did they <laughs> so say anything next about next week? Am I gonna? There might gonna be an extension of the trial for each day. And the oh, schedule. so they didn't confirm at the end. They didn't confirm at the okay. end because I, I, I wasn't there. So at oh, okay, the end, and when the when the jurors have a decision on it, but then it, there's a change of schedule. But then we're gonna confirm that schedule probably later today or tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I think we're almost. Uh, the time is almost up. So any last word for today's trial right i just want to say about the schedule again so yeah. you know the last day of the trial is supposed to be end at the july 12th but then the mm-hmm. judge still wants to keep that as the last day of the of the trial so you know the, the, they don't extend it further for to delay um to anything yeah anything more so he did they wanted to add more times next week mm-hmm. to to finish a lot of the prosecutors the, gotcha. the witness yes. so we might likely have an answer from the jury yes. members right yes. and say confirming that extension or not so yes. we will bring you back the updates tomorrow the same time on rumble at lfa tv at miles trial so thank you for watching thank you both thank you thank you bye-bye thank you.